Hey guys, welcome back to Contest Prep University. I'm Joe Klimzeski here with Adam Atkinson. We're still in our series about planning your perfect peak week, and we're going to move into how to anticipate the things that you might incur on the day of the show, like multiple classes. We're going to end up talking about multiple days, but the first topic at hand, Adam, uh, I know that one of the questions I have to ask a client is, you're, you're competing in multiple classes, so do we have an order of events? Can we anticipate the distance between those, those uh, stage appearances? I've had clients who may be in three classes, and they've got a morning and a night you know, to consider, it. and so all of a sudden we've got six stage appearances to work through. How do you start thinking through that as you're planning people's uh, process? Yeah, so the first thing is getting the show schedule and seeing what that looks like. And then when the competitor's there, you know, you have a tentative plan before, but trying to see how many competitors there are per class. So bodybuilding's typically small, but one thing you always have to consider at that night show, they all do a minute long routine. So if there's 20 bodybuilders, it can take quite a long time for the next bikini class to be on. So really just looking at the timing of the event, making sure your client's not pumping up too long, especially if they're doing multiple appearances, it's easy to pump up too long just because typically they, the show will either go much faster than you anticipate or much slower. You very rarely ever feel like everything's running smoothly. So I try to tell my clients, don't really pump up until your class is lined up. And then just for uh, working around the multiple classes, um, let's say like a bikini and a figure client, you know, timing, do you put a meal between there? Is it going to be two or three hours before you're on? You might want to try to get a meal in right after your prejudging bikini class to do a, uh, you know, have a meal in for your prejudging figure class. So, but only if you have enough time to really digest that meal. If you're within an hour of each other, you might just do a really, really small snack in between just to stay full and make sure you're not dipping down into some flatness and uh, make sure you keep up on water and, you know, keep your head in the game and don't celebrate too much from your first class victory just stay mentally prepared for your next class. Yeah, I think you touched on everything perfectly there. And number one, you really should anticipate this. You know, get that show schedule, know exactly how much time. But then you also do have to play it by ear and you have to manage your peak. So this is where you assessing it and, and relaying good information to your coach, if you're using one, is very important because, um, you know, as you mentioned, Adam, you have to know the context. If I've done a meal maybe two hours before I'm anticipating getting on stage the first time, maybe I've done a little peak week, or I'm sorry, a pre-pump up snack, and that was great. Then if I'm back on stage in 45 minutes, maybe I just need to sip some water. Maybe I don't need to do anything, it's especially as you warned, if you pump up too much, you use so much glycogen that you could get really, really flat. As you use that glycogen, you might release some subcutaneous water and end up you know, looking a little bit filmy as well and before your body can resynthesize that into muscle tissue. So a lot of times you really have to trust your guts and understand what you've been doing and, and, and watch the mirror. But um, you know, any, any last things to say on how to monitor that, Adam? Yeah, I think really staying close to the people that expedite you on stage and just ask them what they're on because you can look at the lists all day long and they can really help you time things better. So don't be afraid to ask the people backstage to, you know, help time when they think you're going to be on stage. Some shows are better than others with that. It depends on how much of an expert the expediter is. Are they really involved in the sport? Or is it the promoter's next door neighbor that got signed on to do All that right. job that day? But um, that can be helpful. Also, like Instagram's great. If they're streaming the show, you can literally see what class is on. And that's something that's helped me as a coach because I've had – people who have literally been pumping up and I'm like, hey, pro bikinis on and they're all going through their routines. You have at least two hours to stop doing what you're doing. <laughs> That's some pretty hardcore monitoring there. Yeah. 
So guys, the, the, the last thing to consider when you're doing this, again, is, is even watching things like, you know, if you start to pump up, if you feel like you're just not getting any volume, maybe you need a little extra sodium and water. Maybe if you don't have time for a big meal, even just sipping on some Gatorade or vitamin water, some things like that. But you've got to really pay attention to your hydration, your overall carbs, how much you're pumping up and sweating, whether or not you even feel like you need a big pump up. But these are important considerations as you're even planning forward for these. So in, in the next episode, we're going to talk about multiple days, not just multiple stage appearances, but what if you have a contest where you're going to be on stage two or three days in a row. So hang around and we will catch you next time for that episode.